have to stop losing species on Earth, and that the, the scientifically based target for nature is probably a global goal for nature that says net zero loss of nature from today onwards. That's Johan Rockström, renowned Swedish professor and co-author of a new paper arguing for a nature positive goal by 2030. But what is nature positive? In short, nature positivity is a target goal to restore nature and its biodiversity. I spoke to Johan to break down the term and better understand the urgency behind it. Because what he's talking about actually needs to happen immediately. It's not some sort of future problem because we're already in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. A good way to look at nature positivity is to think about net zero. Net zero helps us create a balance between the emissions we put out into the atmosphere and the ones we take out. You can watch my video on net zero here. Nature positivity would require us to also create a balance between the nature we destroy and restore, but then go further and increase the amount of restoration so it outweighs the destruction. That's where the positivity comes from. When it's balanced out properly, we'll have achieved net zero nature loss. We would have compensated the loss with restoration and regeneration of nature. We know how to do that to a large extent and then move towards what we call a net positive world by 2050 when we regenerate more nature than we destroy. So we would have stopped loss now and then compensate the unstoppable loss that we will have in a, in a, in a transition phase. And by 2030, it's optimistic, but that would be the path we would have to follow. Biodiversity loss is one of the nine planetary boundaries that humans have pushed beyond their safe limits, as explained in Johan's Netflix documentary, Breaking Boundaries. But according to the paper that he co-authored with Canadian conservationist Harvey Locke, biodiversity can be restored and have a full recovery by 2050. To achieve that, however, nature positivity is broken down into three objectives. The first is working to restore nature from 2020. So in my lifetime, we've eradicated 68%, two thirds of the populations of wildlife on planet Earth. I mean, two thirds in one lifetime. I mean, can you just imagine? It's just a, just an, almost like a mind boggling scale of loss of life on Earth. Now, because we have so much evidence that that life is, is what enables us to live on planet Earth, that's a threat. And that is one, one element of, of why we need a nature positive goal. As Johan said, we've pushed nature past its limit. To achieve a nature positive world, it would require us to protect at least 30% of the world's land and water, protect and support already threatened species, restore degraded ecosystems, and shift towards a more sustainable habit of production and consumption. If we start doing that now, it'll give us a good roadmap to bringing biodiversity loss to zero by 2030, as suggested in this chart. The second objective is to place the world on a nature positive path by 2030. In order to restore biodiversity, we need intact ecosystems such as forests, wetlands, coral reefs, and grasslands, which Johan calls critical biomes. And how do we do that? Well, we can do it by, you know, planting trees, agroforestry, sustainable agriculture, more integrated natural ecosystems with, with landscapes that we are, um, you know, active in. So instead of having industrial chemical agriculture, you can have more integrated intercropping systems. You know, there are many solutions that can take us in that direction. These big ecosystems are part of forming the equilibrium of planet Earth. All those things that Johan just mentioned, they're massive carbon sinks that help with mitigating climate change. So yeah, they're all connected. They are part of the toolbox that enables us to have life on Earth. They, they are what we call the life support systems. They give us breathable air, clean water, food to eat, and, and the environment that can depose waste, recycle nutrients, and keep all the cycles of life intact. So without nature, no life, very simple. And, and that is a, a fundamental starting point because we know that over the last 70 years, we've entered a phase of you know, eradicating species on Earth at a pace that today has reached a level that we can talk of us having entered 
uh, a new mass extinction. And there you have it, the grim reality. Everything you love could disappear. The third and final objective is a full recovery by 2050. Johan and Harvey, along with the other authors of the Nature Positive paper, have acknowledged that some loss and degradation of nature in the foreseeable future is inevitable, all due to the high demand we as a society have for food, energy, transportation, etc. But eventually, if we follow the framework of a nature positive goal, we can change our habits and curtail that loss by 2030. So what can you do as an individual? Well, like I've said before in other explainers, the onus is mostly on big companies and bodies of governments. But that doesn't mean you don't have any influence or power to change perspectives or help enact policies that protect sad endangered ecosystems or species. If every customer starts saying, I want to know, I'm not gonna buy this product unless, unless you tell me what has gone into producing this, what, what nature ecosystem services have been, have been deployed, have been used to deliver uh, this yogurt or this coffee or this bread or this meat and I think just just that that effort of being really engaged concerned consumer is the most important step we can take today because that that has impact 